Dear viewers, you are my greatest inspiration. You have supported me all these years. Your kind words of appreciation motivate me to keep making more videos. Prior to the actual geometry, let's briefly saunter through a couple of key definitions and clarify the fundamental concept. Here you see the planets in a solar system, orbiting the Sun, and the corresponding orbital planes, containing their orbits. Now, let's see what axial tilt means for the Earth and for our Moon. Here you see a comparative illustration of the axial tilt of the Earth and the Moon. Earth's axis is indicated by sky blue dashed line. The direction of the Earth's equatorial plane is indicated by sky blue dotted line. The direction of the Earth's ecliptic plane is indicated by bright yellow dotted line. As we already know, Earth's equatorial plane and ecliptic plane are at an angle of 23.5 degrees with each other. The direction of the Moon's orbital plane is indicated by dotted white line, which is at 5.2 degree angle with respect to Earth's ecliptic plane. For any celestial object, because of axial tilt, ecliptic plane intersects celestial plane, indicated by dashed red line. The two points of intersections on either side are shown in red circles. As we explain the intersection, 
This illustration here shows us how such intersection can be explored for our planet Earth and our satellite Moon. Earth's orbit is shown in grey on pale yellow ecliptic plane, whereas Moon's orbit is shown in bright pink on light pink orbital plane. Half of the Moon's orbit, denoted by dotted curve, happens to be below the Earth's ecliptic plane. The two planes intersect at the bright red solid line. From astronomical, celestial, and terrestrial point of view, the lunar nodes are the points where our moon's route intersects the ecliptic. Earth's ecliptic is shown in teal color, and the moon's orbit is shown in white. The two lunar nodes, the two points of intersections, are shown in red pellets. This illustration is showing you a random locus where Moon's orbit crosses Earth's orbit. The part of the Moon's orbit below the plane is shown in dotted curve. The same, just another spot of crossing. When the trajectories cross whilst going into the northern hemisphere of planet Earth, the juncture or locus is called North Node. As opposed to when the trajectories cross whilst going into the southern hemisphere, it's the South Node. When we try to connect the nodes with the Sun, you can easily explore at which spot they are aligned and not aligned, indicated by violet lines. Now, let's explore how significant lunar nodes are in eclipses. Next couple of illustrations are gonna clarify that. Teal color planet Earth is on its ecliptic plane, shown in grayish violet color, whereas Moon's orbit is shown in white circle. Moon's axial tilt is 5.2 degrees, as we already know. The shadows casted as a result of the Sun's illumination are shown by dark gray cones behind both Earth and Moon. Moon's illuminated half is shown in white, right in front of Earth. It's in fact new Moon from Earth view. Whereas Moon right behind Earth, on the other side of the Sun, would actually be the full Moon from Earth view. Please observe, though needless to say, as depicted in the illustrations, the side of the Moon facing the Sun is the illuminated side visible as gleaming luminous white pearl pellet, contrary to its dark half. Whereas, full moon covered by the projection of Earth's shadow is shown in smoky slate grey. Notwithstanding how its appearance might seem deceiving in the graphics, Earth view of full moon and new moon is of course a matter of moon's location with respect to the sun, that is to say, 
Which side is facing us on Earth? So, if it's full moon, why is it shown in black then? Well, Earth's shadow is projected on it, causing lunar eclipse. Whereas, moon between Earth and the Sun is causing solar eclipse. The red nodal axis, joining the two lunar nodes, indicate how aligned the Sun, Earth, and Moon are, favorable for eclipses to occur. This illustration is showing you the other situations, where the projections of the conical shadows are way off, missing the mark. When we draw the nodal axis, shown in deep pink, we realize why. Absence of alignment, plain and simple. That's what we call unfavorable for eclipse to occur, right? Now, in next couple of illustrations, I'm gonna show you how moon's axial tilt and nodal axis play a crucial role in the too high or too low projections of the conical shadows at certain moon locations. In case you are wondering, does the moon actually rotate, or, is its same side always facing the earth, and, if you are curious to know, why eclipses do not occur every month at every full and new moon dates, then watch these videos and find out these fascinating facts and much more. The links are in the description.
on my online video tutorial channel. Knowledge seeking enthusiasts with further interest will find an immensely elaborate video lesson series Lunar Standstill, which is a compact knowledge bank in five chapters, with concrete and precise key aspects, presented step by step. Where, fascinating topics, subtopics, and concepts, such as, precession of the equinoxes, nodal cycle, Earth's third motion, Sun's apparent annual path, celestial coordinate system, and much more have been explained in minute details, using numerous tutor viewer reciprocative texts, and lucid illustrations, so eloquently that even a beginner would promptly comprehend. Various learning pathways and online resources have been utilized. Please watch and explore. Please remember to like, subscribe, share,